Hey everybody and welcome back to Lindsay's Little Library. So today is uh, Thursday, which means it's Booklist Thursday. It's something I do with Sarah over at Sarah's Nightstand. We come to you every Thursday with some sort of book thoughts, ideas, recommendations, something bookish related. And today is the final Thursday in May. We are gearing up for an awesome Memorial Day weekend. I am so looking forward to it. Um, and with that, we're also starting to make some of our summer reading plans. We're signing up through our local library for the summer reading challenge. There's different challenges out there and things to do, and summer's a really great time to pick up a good book. So I wanted, or we, Sarah and I came to you today to tell you some of the books that are on our list of books to read this summer. So I have a few of them here. I have actually six of them. So I'm really excited, and I'll tell you reasons why. I have picked each of them. Um, first up, I have two of them. So I am attempting to read read my backlist. So whenever I need to pick up new books, I pick the top book from the top shelf very, all the way over to the side and then whatever the last book is on the bottom shelf over here. So I have those two books up next. First one is All Is Not Forgotten by Wendy Walker. This has been on my shelf for quite a while. I couldn't tell you where I got this from. I want to say um, it's from Book Outlet. But this is a psychological thriller family drama-ish. We have a small town in Connecticut and it's like that perfect, picture perfect, wonderful little small town. Everybody gets along. Things are fantastic. Until one night Jenny is attends a local party and she um, is attacked at this local party. Um, leaving her physically and emotionally wounded. She then takes a very controversial drug that will medically erase her memory of the violent assault. Um, and in the weeks and months that follows, she's healing from the physical wounds. She doesn't actually recall what happened, but yet she has this pent up emotional scarring that she's also dealing with. And then you have her mom and dad. Her dad is on a quest to figure out who attacked his daughter. And then her mom is acting like nothing happened and everything's just fine. So this is kind of the recipe for disaster. Who knows what's gonna happen? The very last line says, um, uh, oh wow, it's, a, it's an entire, oh wow, that's a big sentence. Okay, as Tom and Charlotte, her mom and dad, seek help for their daughter, the fault lines within their marriage and their community emerge from the shadows where they have been hidden for years and the relentless quest to find the monster who invaded their town or perhaps lives among them drives this thriller to a shocking and unexpected conclusion. So, I mean, that's the, those are those are tall words. <laughs> that's big expectations, unexpected conclusion. Okay. Um, so we're gonna give this a try and see what happens and Hopefully get to it this summer. Um, what exactly are we trying to do here, sir? I don't know if you can see him. There he is. Okay, next one I have, yeah. it's upside down. This is the one that I grabbed from the shelf down over here. This is The Girl Who Came Home. Um, it is a Titanic story by Hazel Gaynor. I have a cat who's attempting to jump somewhere. He shouldn't. All right, so we have dual timelines. We have Ireland 1912 as 14 members of a village set sail on the Titanic, hoping to find a better life in America. So we have 17-year-old Maggie. Um, this journey is bittersweet. Her future lies in the unknown new place. Her heart remains in Ireland with her sweetheart she left behind. Maggie is one of the few passengers to survive the wreckage. Uh, waking up in New York, she vows never to speak of the terror and panic of that fateful night again. So then we have Chicago 1982, adrift after the death of her father, we have Grace trying to decide what comes next and her great grandmother, Maggie, shares the painful secret about the Titanic that she's harbored for almost a lifetime. The revelation gives Grace new direction and leads both her and Maggie to unexpected reunions with those they thought they lost long ago. So I am here for the dual timeline. Oh, and there's like letters in here. This can be fantastic. I'm excited. So there's that one. All right. The next book that I really want to get to this summer is going to be kind of my atmospheric read. This is The Lake by Natasha Preston. I have yet to read a Natasha Preston book and I have like three or four of them. So I'm really excited about it. This um, takes place at a camp. It says, welcome to Camp Pine Lake, where the only thing scarier than a ghost story is the past coming to haunt you. I plan on reading this at the lake at some point. I know we're going to go there. 
in June, like right away. So maybe I'll pick it up and bring that with me. This view looks exactly like the end of the dock where I go. So I'm going to try to do some sort of fun Instagram post too, but I'm excited to get to that one. And then the next three are books that have just been continuously recommended to me that I just would love to get to. First one is Unmissing by Minka Kent. Um, Amanda from the Curly Reader sent this to me because she's like, this sounds like a book I need to read. Um, follows Merritt and her husband have the life they've dreamed of. Um, beautiful house, promising future, growing family. And that dream ends late one night with a knock at the door. Luca's first wife, who was presumed dead, who was went missing 10 years ago, is alive and at the door. So excited to get to this one. I got, I got to pick it up. Next one I have is Book of Lost Names by Kristen Harmel. A couple people have read this recently, have had and have recommended it to me. Um, so World War II, that's all I have to say. World War II historical fiction. I'm a, I'm here for it. And then we have The School for Good Mothers, which again, I've been hearing about um, by Jessamine Ch Chan. So I've been hearing like, like you shouldn't really like the book, but you can't help but like the book. That type of a vibe. So uh, let's see. It's basically around the state or the government um, has eyes on how people are mothering. And if you don't meet the requirements, you are taken and kind of sent to school. So very interested, very interested in this. So that's the other one on my list. So there's six books I really want to get to this summer amongst, you know, all the other ones. But that, those are the ones that are kind of on my radar. I do put the books that I want to read next kind of in this area. I have Book of Cold Cases is in here too. Um, I have a book club book here and then I have two my two five star predictions. Um, so I will find some room amongst these book sleeves to add this pile to it and we'll see kind of what we get through over the summer. But hopefully all of them. I don't know. We'll see. Um, head over to Sarah's channel and see what she is excited for to pick up this summer and what her plans are. I know I'm going to participate in my library's reading challenge and we'll kind of just see what happens, but I'm really excited. I always love reading. I mean, I love reading all the time, but there's something about sitting outside either in my hammock or my front porch or whatever at the lake with a book. It's fantastic. So go see what Sarah has to say. Otherwise comment below. Do you have any good book plans for the summer? Um, like, and subscribe and all that stuff. And we'll see you next time. Bye.